Yo, 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 welcome back again today, guys. Today, we're going to be talking about Afro-Filipinos. Afro-Filipinos, known as the Aitas, are the original people of the Philippines. They are also related to the other original peoples all over the southeastern Asian islands, such as the aboriginal people of Australia. The Aitas consist of 30 different ethnic groups. Many Aitas are located in the mountainous regions of Luzon part of the country. They are also located in the eastern area, central area, and several islands of the country. Most original peoples ruled over land masses and islands before the Industrial Revolution period of human history. Most Aitas were nomadic hunter-gatherers in their forested ancestral lands. With organizations and people encroaching more and more on their land, they must engage in more commerce to acquire food throughout the year. The Aitas are known for their short, smaller statures, curly hair, and brown and dark skin. Many Aitas are under five feet tall. Being masters of the jungle, the Aitas have high knowledge of forest herbs. These herbs are used for a multitude of things, including food and medicine. The forest is used to also make weapons, tools, and shelter for the people. When the Spanish came to the country, they would colonize and claim the island for Spain. Due to the Aitas being inland and their resistance, multiple failed attempts occurred for the Spanish to convert them religiously and to control them. The weapons of choice were bow and arrow and iron weapons. Even with their skills, some of them were still enslaved and sold out and in the country. Home structures are made of banana leaves and sticks pushed into the ground. Modern Aitas live in houses made of bamboo and grass. Unfortunately, the people have and are decreasing due to country projects, deforestation, and mixing with newer groups of peoples in the country. During the dry season, the people clear the land for harvest in the future. They also hunt intensively for wild animals. Traps, bow and arrows, dogs, and knives are used to hunt. Around the age of 15, most Aitas will learn how to gather and hunt. Fishing is also done at a higher rate during the dry season. Many different Aida groups trade food and other items with non-Aida groups. This usually happens during the dry season in the cities and rural areas. Storytelling is very important to the people. This storytelling is used to pass down morals, values, ways of life, and religion. Ida ethnic groups all share similar religious practice, but some vary. It isn't clear if there is one God who comes to humans in different forms or one God who rules over lesser forest spirits. The great creator has four different forms who rules the world. What is for sure is evil and good spirits are in the island. Spirits are in the sky, hills, mountain, and rivers. The Ida pray and dance before and after hunts. This can symbolize saying sorry to the animal before they hunt and kill them. This prayer and dance is also used to simultaneously attract and charm the animals to catch them. During the early to mid-1900s, many American Christian groups came to the Philippines to spread and convert different groups of people on the island. With this happening, many different groups of Aidas are Christian or partly Christian. Aidas are known for their weaving skills. The women are known to weave mats and raincoats made of palm leaves, while the men create armlets. The people are known for herbs and healing themselves as well. Banana leaves are used herbally for toothaches, while teas, cold mixes, 
and other things are used for everyday events like childbirth. Wine is also consumed as a birth control. Some roots are good to drink, while other plants close their leaves when touched. These are considered bad roots to drink. The reason is, Ida's believe their womb will close up like the leaves on the plant. They also consume certain plants for menstrual cycles and to regulate blood pressure. If these natural remedies do not work, the Ida seek out a soothsayer because they believe they offended a spirit. The soothsayer will perform a ritual where raw eggs and rice are put on the person's head many times. This is to diagnose the problem. The person will then wash in rice water and offer food to the offended spirit. The people also practice scarification. After wounding parts of their bodies, they will use lime or fire to have the scar raised. Filing of the teeth is also practiced. This chipping of the teeth usually happens in the teen years and the teeth eventually will be dyed with a black fluid. Traditionally, the people were all on equal ground with each other. The fathers would be the head of the house, but in the community, everyone was on the same level. Elder councils do and did exist, but these elders only gave advice but did not enforce it on an individual. With the contact and lowland groups in the country moving into Aita's territory, some groups tried to impose a governance belief on the people. Aida's highly rejected this. This did, for some Aida groups, change hierarchy slightly. In some groups of Aita's, one elder would be appointed to speak on the behalf of the people. Trials for people within the group that did a crime would have to face a court. Children are not allowed to attend, and women are also not allowed to attend due to traditional gender roles in the people. The women can speak on the situation though. Elders and men of the court council don't enforce a punishment on the wrongdoer, but instead try to find out why the person did what they did. This is to prevent it from happening again. In modern times, some Idas live in modern cities and schooling is very normal. Some Idas have married other Filipino groups who came to the country much later than them. One event that is said to have an impact on the Idas was the 1991 volcanic eruption. This eruption displaced many Idas and made them move to cities. Once moving, their culture would be influenced and intertwined to some extent. The Philippine government passed acts to shed more light on the original people of the country. After years of mistreatment, in 1997, the Indigenous People's Rights Act was passed. In the late 90s, organizations like the Indigenous People Development Plan was created. On February 2nd, 2001, the Aidas were granted ancestral domain title to their land. Interesting enough, it was written in English and not the Aidas traditional language. Over 2,000 or more Aidas have acquired their ancestral land back throughout the country. Though, many Aida ethnic groups have not and are still fighting to do so. So yo guys, today we learned about Afro-Filipinos. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe, turn on the bell notification down there so you can get all my videos. Add me on all social medias, which is Afric Network, which is Instagram, Twitter, SoundCloud, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, each one teach one. Always love each other, always learn from each other. And yo guys, until next time, peace, one love. Mm -hmm.